Hi, my name is Eric Klein. Today I'm introducing a new feature for K-Cycles, K-Cycles Flare. And I'm going to be covering flares, settings and details, and go through some of the Bloom settings quickly. But for more in-depth for Bloom, you can see my first video. K-Cycle Flares is a lens flare implementation right on the Cycles Preview viewport. The lens flare types include glare, anamorphic, and ghost effects. Flares are physically based on the light brightness, size, and color. K-Cycle flares have many artistic controls that can create really amazing effects. They are animation ready, with all the settings fully keyable, and with previews right on the viewport. It works with Cycle Sky texture, like Nishida and others, commercial sky add-ons, SGRIs, or real lights, or emission lights. It's easy to use designed to create your great results without Photoshop or using a compositor. So we start with this demo blender scene from the Mishida sky texture. As you can see, it was a great addition to Cycles and added a lot of nice sky controls and features, but the sun is still a very basic circle. So let's see what we can do with K-Cycles, flares, and bloom. When you open K-Cycle, we have four types of effects, bloom, flares, the mapping, and lens. Also make sure that your denoiser is set to optics on the viewport. Final render can have any denoiser or no denoiser at all. First, when you're working with flares, it's good to combine it with some bloom effect. Start with bloom first. And as you can see right away, the sun is already having a bloom effect and it's looking already much better. As normally, you can set the controls for the bloom through the threshold. Blend will let you know how much of the effect gets blended into the scene. If you go basically to one, this is exactly what we're adding, the bloom effect that we're adding into the scene. And if you go to zero, you basically have no bloom effect into the scene. The ideal number is 0.5, where it basically is a balance of merging the effect into the scene. You can go lower and still we have gradually a add the effect higher than 0.5 is not really recommended because start darkening your image. So the goal is 0.5 and lower to blend in or to see and tweak the effect alone and without the whole scene. This sometimes can be a bit confusing. We can go all the way to one and adjust and we can go back to 0.5. Size, obviously the size of the bloom. We can go no bloom effect all the way to large bloom effect. For this sun, I think eight looks, that value looks acceptable. Intensity, you can adjust it, the brightness, go really bright or less. I think that's good value there in proportion to the scene, a little bit lower. And we can always tint. If you want a little more of a more yellowish, you can click right on the color wheel and you'll see how automatically it is the color tinting it works and you can create the right type of tinting for your bloom effect that looks good we can change later on once we put the flares on if you want more of a more of a sunset feel more red you can have it with a more, more yellowish reddish color clamp basically clamps the minimum amount of brightness that you can actually have a bloom effect on so zero is no clamping you go one or clamp sump as you can see it's already clamping but typically one will be you lose most of the effect at that point because the threshold is at one so uh, normally i don't use clamp unless there's some type of specific need when you have too many lights and you want to ignore certain lights out of the scene let's go back to zero so that's the basics of bloom now let's go to flares flares basically we have one two main controls which is threshold level but this is only related to the flare effect and the blend. So right now we, we're only seeing the bloom effect that came in through. We haven't yet added any flares. It basically you're combining both with this blend. Let's start with glare. First thing is you want to start with power. Power ratio, the amount of flare that you have on your effect. Sometimes you just want to focus on the glare alone. You can turn off bloom for now and we can see what, what glare is doing. So as you can start, you can see we already have the amount of six six rays and we can already see the level of of the rays and we can also obviously change how many rays you want and as you can see everything is interactive once the render sample gets to the max level and on the rendering is done i mean at that point uh, you can tweak without any delay any of the effects rotation is i mean pretty obvious but basically rotate rotate the amount of rotation that you want to have on the race 
30 is a good start for, for six. Thin level is something unique that I have not seen in any of the V-Ray or other commercial post effects viewport features. It allows you to control the thickness of your ray. If you want to have a thinner ray, which is in some effects is really much more desirable. Also, so some of the science fiction effects where some of the effects are much thinner on the rays, you can increase the thinness level. The higher the level, the thinner the ray becomes. And as you can see, it's a very, but as you reduce some of the thin level, the intensity gets reduced a bit. So you have to definitely increase some of the power sizes if you wanted to stretch out more. This would give you a more natural feel of the flare effect because typically this one is, I think it's just too thick for in this case, but it's really depending on what you're looking for and what you want to do in your specific scene. We'll start with this level. Intensity is basically gives you how much brightness you add into the into the flare. It's going to affect some of the, the the length because it affects some of the power settings, but it's done after the power gives you a little bit more of a fine control on that intensity of the flare. Shift really allows you to do some color modulation on the flare itself, changing color. I uh, usually do not too much of it. A little variation can make the flare look more interesting. Color tint, basically the same as we saw with Bloom. We can write on the color wheel, we can just click on. on. If you want to have more of a sunset look, I would move a, the orangey yellowish tint for the flare. Softness levels allows you to basically control. It's very sharp. The flare effect, soften up the effect. Typically we start at zero, which is sharp and no softness. And some some some, some flares work well with being sharp. I, in this case, I do want to have some softness to the flare. So now that we've controlled all these settings, we can now check on the bloom and, and see if we can kind of combine both in a way that they look kind of they are unified. Here I think I would definitely, you can add more rays and then we can reduce some of the power so make it smaller. The flares to be part of the sun bloom or the, you want them the flare to go way outside the area of, of the bloom. And you can also increase some of the intensity to make it cover a wider area. You can also soften the amount of the, how strong the flare is by doing also the blend. One is giving us both only the effect and then we can go lower in this case if I want it to be more blended in, I can actually reduce it and it'll be more blended into, into the scene, so it's not as strong. So it's, it, this is more of an artistic effect. Or you can reduce the intensity of the, of the actual glare itself. To reduce them, it becomes more realistic as far as the effect. And we could add more, a couple more rays on it. So now I think we have a pretty nice looking glare effect. <laughs> One of the unique things that we have with, with Kesako's effects is that we can have all of these effects all at the same time. So we also have anamorphic. The same type of settings you don't need rays for anamorphic, but the rest of them do exactly the same thing. Start with power. In this case, we start. It looks way too thick for what I'm going on this scene. I go and adjust my thinness level to something that, that I think is going to look good. I may want to copy and paste the color, same color tint in, into the anamorphic, so control C to copy the glare color right into the anamorphic color tint. And now they look much closer to each other. The settings is the same idea. We can turn off bloom, the flares on. Sometimes you do need to adjust the ray rotations. It's not on top of the same anamorphic ray. We can go adjust to something that, that I think it would look good. We can adjust slightly more there. So at 15, it looks like it's put together. We can make it thinner if we want by making the thin level higher. And also we can adjust the softness. In this case, you can do a very sharp anamorphic effect. Like you see some of the Star Wars scenes where this anamorphic is a very thin ray. I like to have a little bit of softness so it looks more blended together with the scene, with the sky. That would give us a right, correct level of softness together with the bloom. Already done both glare and anamorphic. Now the last effect that we can add to is ghost. This adds an effect that, that mirrors the initial sun replicates it out into the scene, creating some ghosts of the actual initial sun. So we can start with increasing the intensity, have some ghosts coming in. We can start adding some color shift. 
At this case, Gross, I normally like to have them really soft into the scene, so I normally have a very low intensity, so they don't become too distracting. So there's your Ghost. Touch up a little bit of scene and maybe add a little bit. I've already we touched some of the scenes, I'd be added, increase the shadow for the sand dunes and increase the saturation to give it a little bit more vivid color. And those were the two things that I've adjusted. All of these effects are all real time. Also, I've added on this a little bit of distortion. Zoom in when you increase that distortion or zoom out to give it more of a feel of a landscaping far away scene. I usually go below zero for that effect. There's just some flare, the anamorphic a little bit longer. We can increase slightly the power, tweak down some of the intensity for that anamorphic. That was giving us flare effects. All of them are working together and obviously we can go back turn them all off or we can go back on and now we have a very effective sound flare. So now we are ready to do a final render. So we hit F12. We should have a match of what we actually have on the viewport and if you look at it we typically have the same effect on the final render. And one issue inherent with this algorithm of, of the flares and same would be with the compositor. There's a couple of settings that are resolution dependent. Power setting and also the thin level. If you are going to render at 4K, let's say you're going to be rendering at double the resolution or more on, on the viewport. What I recommend is going to your camera and our focal length is 18. If you 236, that's doubling your resolution. We are going to be the effect when it, when it comes up, you see the flares don't stretch out the same anymore. Normally what I recommend is have a separate camera for the 4K final render or that a 2X final render plan to do. You can tweak it with this new camera it has doubled the focal length. The power needs to be increased to get the same amount of ray length. And also we need to also increase the thinness level. Normally we almost have to go double if we're going double the resolution or close to it. The same thing is happening to the bloom. To size nine, to the intensity. We can now also just finish up with the power. I think we have the right softness already and the anamorphic. It's already been set up properly for, for this resolution, softness. And now we can do the double the resolution, which in this case I would go, I had it 80, we'll go to, we'll do it to 170. So now let's quickly, we'd have to switch to our normal camera, back to the, to the One X camera. And now we can do a final render for the double the resolution at 170. See the viewport is at the One X, but, the effect will be rendering for the right settings at that 2x resolution. As you can see, it's a large image. So now we can see that this is our 4K with double the resolution image. And we can compare it to the one we did before. So to have the same type of effect settings to, to match each other. So now let's look at using lens flare effects on an interior studio type of scene. We go back to our BMW scene and I've already kind of set up the, the settings for it just to speed up this uh, second part of the scene in tutorial. So we go back and go to preview mode. I usually recommend obviously trying to maximize your preview size so the effects more or less get matched more precisely to the final render. So we start with as usual, we start with our bloom effect. Here, you can see that I'll show what I did. And in the threshold normally starts at one. I increased it to two, mainly because I wanted to remove some of the reflection bright areas of the car. I increased it to two. Size, I kept it at eight. And intensity, I increased it from, from one to two. And I wanted to have more of a bluish type of tint on this light. So I set this color to this bluish look. Tinting. So that gives us our first effect, which is our bloom. Now let's look at flares. Obviously, I did the same threshold level, but what I did on the glare is increase the power to 0.3. So no, we have no glare. Let's turn off anamorphic for now. We can see that that increasing the power for the glare, like a pretty maybe a little bit higher. Let's go to something like this. 0.3. I set up the rays to about 9. I add some sharpness to the rays. It's like to more or less of thin, thin level of 4. A little higher intensity. I kept the light relatively white. 
which makes it with a bloom. Then we have glare, and we can look at how that looks into the scene. We can already see the rays coming out from the glare. Now let's do the anamorphic. Let's increase the power. You can see a nice flare. I wanted to have a nice bluish tint for the anamorphic flare. Also important is I wanted to match the rotation. The rotation normally starts at zero. As you can see, the car, the angle of the car, you really want to be matching the lights as far as the angle of the car. So bring my scene back in. I wanted to have that angle there. So I do it increase the rotation these guys are something at that level looks this one that's matching there you go so that gives the anamorphic if i turn back the plane to one we can see the ghost put it at 0.5 this gives you a nice kind of extra visual interest i see there's no ghost slight amount of ghost onto the scene depends obviously on the rest of the how, how it combines with the rest of the scene a slight color shift you can go back and Blend it back together and now we have our anamorphic and glare effect and then we add the bloom this gives you a much more interesting light headlights and interest on your scene and also added some of the tone mapping effects strong but increase your saturation make the colors a lot more vivid and increase the shadow for the dark areas on the underground and the white balance going to move a bluish color color white balance and i added on the lens effect a little bit of distortion and move a zoom in look and with a, some of the vignette so once you're happy with your settings we go back to the f12 for our final render so as you can see we have a pretty good match on the final render so i hope you enjoy this new k cycles flares feature combined with the rest of all the effects thank you next time